Welcome to the Thousand Nights and One Night. Now, during this time, Shahrazad had borne the king three boy children. So when she had made an end of story of Maruf, she rose to her feet, and kissing ground before him said, O king of the time, and unique one of the age and tide, I am thy handmaid, and these thousand days and nights I have entertained thee with stories of folk gone before, and admonitory instances of the men of yore. May I then make bold to crave a boon of thy highness? He replied, Ask, O Shahrazad, and it shall be granted to thee. Whereupon she cried out to the nurses and the eunuchs, saying, Bring me my children. So they brought them in to her in haste, and they were three boy children, one walking, one crawling, and one sucking. They took them, and setting them before the king again, kissed the ground, and said, O king of the age, these are thy children, and I crave that thou release me from the doom of death as a dole to these infants, for an thou kill me, they will become motherless, and will find none other women to rear them as they should be reared. When the king heard this, he wept, and straining the boys to his bosom, said, By Allah, O Shahrazad, I pardon thee before the coming of these children, for that I found thee chaste, pure, ingenious, and pious. Allah bless thee and thy father and thy mother and thy root and thy branch. I take the Almighty to witness against me that I exempt thee from aught that can harm thee. So she kissed his hands and feet, and rejoiced with exceeding joy, saying, The Lord make thy life long, and increase thee in dignity and majesty, presently adding, Thou marvellest at that which befell thee on the part of women, yet there betided the kings of the Kosseros before thee greater mishaps, and more grievous than that which hath befallen thee. And indeed I have set forth unto thee that which happened to caliphs and kings and others with their women but the relation is longsome and hearkening groweth tedious and this is the all-sufficient warning for the man of wits and admonishment for the wise then he ceased to speak and when king shara said to her speech and profited by that which she said he summoned up his reasoning powers and cleansed his heart and caused his understanding revert and turned to Allah Almighty and said to himself, Since there befell the kings of the Kosros more than that which hath befallen me, never whilst I live shall I cease to blame myself for the past. As for this Shahrazad, her like is not to be found in the lands, so praise be to him who appointed her a means for delivering his creatures from oppression and slaughter. Then he arose from his seance, and kissed her head, whereat she rejoiced, she and her sister Denyazad, with exceeding joy. When the morning morrowed, the king went forth, and sitting down on the throne of kingship, summoned the lords of his lands, whereupon the chamberlains and nabobs and captains of the host went into him, and kissed the ground before him. He distinguished the wazir, Shahrazad's sire, with special favor, and bestowed on him a costly and splendid robe of honor, and entreated him with the utmost kindness, and said to him, Allah protect thee, for that thou gavest me a wife, thy noble daughter, who hath been the means of my repentance from slaying the daughters of folk. Indeed, I have found her pure and pious, chaste and ingenious, and Allah hath vouchsafed me by her three boy children, whereupon praise be he for his passing favor. Then he bestowed robes of honor upon his wazirs and emirs and chief officers, and he set forth to them briefly that which had betided him was Shahrazad, and how he had turned from his former ways, and repented him of what he had done, and proposed to take the wazir's daughter Shahrazad to wife, and let draw up the marriage contract with her. When those who were present heard this, they kissed the ground before him, and blessed him and his betrothed, Shahrazad, and the wazir thanked her. Then Shariar made an end of his sitting in all wheel,
whereupon the folk dispersed to their dwelling places, and the news was bruited abroad that the king proposed to marry the wazir's daughter, Shahrazad. Then he proceeded to make ready the wedding gear, and presently he sent after his brother, King Shah Zaman, who came, and King Shariar went forth to meet him with the troops. Furthermore, they decorated the city after the goodliest fashion, and diffused scents from censers, and burnt aloes, woods, and other perfumes in all the markets and thoroughfares, and rubbed themselves with saffron, what while the drums beat, and flutes and pipes sounded, and mimes and mountebanks played, and plied their arts, and the king lavished on them gifts and largesse, and in very deed it was a notable day. When they came to the palace, King Shariar commanded to spread the tables with beasts, roasted whole, and sweetmeats, and all manners of viands, and bade the crier cry to the folk that they should come up to the divan, and eat, and drink, and this should be the means of reconciliation between him and them. So high and low, great and small, came up to him, and they abode on that wise eating and drinking seven days with their nights. Then the king shut himself up with his brother, and related to him that which had betided him with the wazir's daughter Shahrazad during the past three years, and told him what he had heard from her of proverbs and parables, chronicles and pleasantries, quips and jests, stories and anecdotes, dialogues and histories and elegies and other verses, where at King Shah Zaman marveled with the utmost marvel, and said, Fain, would I take her younger sister to wife, so we may be two brothers German, to two sisters German, and they unlikewise be sisters to us, for that the calamity which befell me was the cause of our discovering that which befell thee, and all this time of three years past, I have taken no delight in women, save that I lie with each one a damsel of my kingdom, and every morning I do put them to death. But now I desire to marry thy wife's sister, Dunyazard. When King Shariar heard his brother's words, he rejoiced with exceeding joy, and arising forthright, went in to his wife Shahrazad, and acquainted her with that which his brother proposed, namely, that he sought her sister Dunyazad in wedlock. Whereupon she answered, O king of the age, we seek of him one condition to wit, that he take up his abode with us, for that I cannot brook to be apart from my sister, not even one hour, because we were brought up together, and may not endure separation each from the other. If he accept this pact, she is his handmaid. King Shariar returned to his brother, and acquainted him with that which Shahrazad had said, and he replied, Indeed, this is what was in my mind, and that I desire never more to be parted from thee, not even one hour. As for the kingdom, Allah the Most High shall send to it whomso he chooseth, for that I have no longer desire for the kingship. When King Shariar heard his brother's words, he rejoiced exceedingly and said, Verily, this is what I wished, O oh my brother. So Allah praised be Allah, who hath brought upon union between us. Then he said after the Kazis, the Olimas, the captains, and the notables, and they married the two brothers. To the two sisters. The contracts were written out, and the two kings bestowed robes of honor of silk and satin on those who were present, whilst the city was decorated, and lots of rejoicing was renewed. The king commanded each emir and wazir and chamberlain and nabob to decorate his palace, and the folk of the city were gladdened by the presage of happiness and contentment. King Shariar also bade slaughter sheep, and set up kitchens, and made bride feasts, and fed all comers, high and low. And he gave alms to the poor and needy, and extended his bounty to great and small. Then the eunuchs went forth that they might perfume the hammond for the brides. So they scented it with rose water, and willow flower water, and pods of musk, and fumigated with kakil eagle wood, and ambergris. Then Shahrazad entered she and her sister Denizad, and they cleansed their heads and clipped their hair. When they came forth of the Hammond bath, they donned raiment and ornaments, such as men were wont prepare for the kings of the Khosros. 
and among Shahrazad's apparel was a dress purfled with red gold and wrought with counterfeit pressments of birds and beasts, and the two sisters encircled their necks with necklaces of jewels of price in the like which Iskandir rejoiced not, for therein were great jewels, such as amazed the wit and dazzled the eyes, and the imagination was bewildered at their charms, for indeed each of them was brighter than the sun and the moon. Before them they lighted brilliant flambeaux of wax in candelabras of gold, but their faces outshone the flambeau, for that they had eyes sharper than unsheathed swords, and the lashes of their eyelids bewitched all hearts. <laughs> their cheeks were rosy red, and their necks and shapes gracefully swayed, and their eyes wantoned like the gazelles, and the slave girls came to meet them with instruments of music. Then the two kings entered the Hammond bath, and when they came forth, they sat down on a couch set with pearls and gems, whereupon the two sisters came up to them and stood between their hands as they were moons, bending and leaning from side to side in their beauty and loveliness. Presently they brought forward Shahrazad and displayed her for the first time in a red suit, whereupon King Shariar rose to look upon her, and the wits of all present men and women were bewitched, for that she was even as saith of her one of her describers. A sun on wand in knoll of sand she showed, clad in her cramacy huge chemise. Of her lips honey-dew she gave me drink, and with her rosy cheeks quenched fire she set. Then they attired Dunyazad in a dress of blue brocade, and she became as she were the full moon when it shineth forth. So they displayed her in this for the first dress before King Shah Zaman, who rejoiced in her, and well nigh swooned away for love longing and amorous desire. Yea, he was distraught with passion for her, when as he saw her, because she was a saith of one of her describers in these couplets. She comes apparelled in her azure suit, ultramarine as skies are decked and dight. I viewed the unparalleled sight which showed my eyes a summer moon upon a winter night. Then they returned to Shahrazad and displayed her in the second dress, a suit of surpassingly goodliness, and veiled her face with her hair like a chin veil. Moreover, they let down her side locks and she was even as saith of one of her describers in these couplets. O oh, hail to him, whose locks his cheek o'er shade, who slew my life by cruel heart despite, said I. Hast veiled the morn and night? He said, Nay, I but veil moon in hue of night. Then they displayed Denizad in a second, and a third, and a fourth dress, and she paced forward like the rising sun, and swayed, to and fro in the insolence of beauty. And she was even as saith the poet of her in these couplets, The sun of beauty she to all appears, And lovely coy she mocks all loveliness. And when he fronts her favor and her smile, A morn the sun of day in clouds must dress. Then they displayed Shahrazad and the third dress, And the fourth, and the fifth, and she became as the band branch snell or a thirsting gazelle, lovely of face and perfect in attributes of grace, even as saith of her in one of these couplets. She comes like the fullest moon on happy night, taper of waist and shape of magic might. She hath an eye whose glances quell mankind, and ruby on her cheeks reflects her light, and veils her hips the blackness of her hair. Beware of curls that bite with viper bite. Her sides are silken soft, that while the heart mere rock behind the surface scrapes our sight, from the fringed curtains of her eye she shoots, shafts that at the furthest ranch on mark alight. Then she returned to Dunyazad and displayed her in the fifth dress and the sixth which was green, which she surpassed with her loveliness the fair of the four quarters of the world, and outvied with the brightness of her countenance the full moon at rising tide, for she was even as saith of her the poet in these couplets. 
a damsel. "'Twas the tire's art had decked with snare and slight, "'and robed with rays as so the sun from her had borrowed light. "'She came before us, wondrous clad in shemit of green, "'as veiled by his leafy screen, pomegranate hides from sight. "'And when he said, "'How callest thou the fashion of thy dress?' She answered of us in pleasant way, with double meanings dight. We call this garment Cravcour, and right is it height, for many a heart with this we break, and harried many a sprite. Then they displayed Shahrazad in the sixth and seventh dresses, and clad her in youth's clothing, whereupon she came forward, swaying from side to side, and coquettishly moving, and indeed she ravished wits and hearts and ensorcelled all eyes with her glances. She shook her sides, and swayed her haunches, then put her hair on sword-hilt, and went up to King Shariar, who embraced her as hospitable host in his braces guest, and threatened her in her ear with the taking of the sword, and she was even as saith of her the poet in these words. Were it not the murk of gender male, the feminine surpassing fair, tire women, they had grudged the bride, who made her beard and whiskers wear. Thus also they did with her sister Dunyazad, and when they had made an end of the display, the king bestowed robes of honor on all who were present, and set the brides to their own apartments. Then Shahrazad went in to King Shariar, and Dunyazad to King Shah Zaman, and each of them solaced himself with the company of his beloved consort, and the hearts of the folks were comforted. When morning morrowed, the wazir came in to the two kings, and kissed ground before them, wherefore they thanked him, and were large of bounty to him. Presently they went forth and sat down upon couches of kingship, whilst all the wazirs and emirs and grandees and lords of the land presented themselves and kissed ground. King Shariar ordered them dresses of honor and largesse, and they prayed for the permanence and prosperity of the king and his brother. Then the two sovereigns appointed their sire-in-law, the wazir, to be viceroy in Sarmarkand, and assigned him five of the chief emirs to accompany him, charging them attend him and do him service. The minister kissed the ground, and prayed that they might be vouchsafed length of life. Then he went into his daughters, whilst the eunuchs and ushers walked before him and saluted them, and farewelled them. They kissed his hands and gave him joy of the kingship, and bestowed on him immense treasures, after which he took leave of them, and setting out fair days and nights, till he came near Sarmarkand, where the townspeople met him at a distance of three marches, and rejoiced in him with exceeding joy. So he entered the city, and they decorated the houses, and it was a notable day. He sat down on the throne of his kingship, and the wazirs did him homage, and the grandees and the emirs of Sarmakand, and all prayed that he might be vouchsafed justice and victory and length of continuance. So he bestowed on them robes of honor, and entreated them with distinction, and made him sultan over them. As soon as his father-in-law had departed from Sarmarkand, King Shariar summoned the grandees of his realm, and made them a stupendous banquet of all manner of delicious meats and exquisite sweetmeats. He also bestowed on them robes of honor, and garnered them, and divided the kingdom between himself and his brother in their presence, whereat the folk rejoiced. Then the two kings abode, each ruling a day in turn, and they were ever in harmony, each with the other, while on similar wise their wives continued in the love of Allah Almighty, and in thanksgiving to him. And the peoples and the provinces were at peace, and the preachers prayed for them from the pulpits, and the report was brooded about, and the travelers bore tidings of them to all lands. In due time, King Shariar summoned chroniclers and copyists, and bade them write all that had betided between him and his wife, first and last. So they wrote this, and named it, The Stories of the Thousand Nights and a Night. The book came to thirty volumes, and these the king laid up in his treasury. And the two brothers, they abode with their wives in all pleasance and solace of life, and its delight, for that indeed Allah the Most High had changed their annoy into joy. 
and on this wise they continued till they took from them the destroyer of delights and the sever of societies the desolator of dwelling places and garnerer of graveyards and they were translated to the ruth of almighty allah their houses fell waste and their palaces lay in ruins and the kings inherited their riches then there reigned after them a wise ruler who was just king-witted and accomplished and loved tales and legends especially those which chronicle the doings of sovereigns and sultans and he found in the treasury these marvellous stories and wondrous histories contained in the thirty volumes aforesaid so he read in them a first book and a second and a third and so on till the last of them and each book astounded and delighted him more than that which preceded it till he came to the end of them then he admired what so he had read therein of description and discourse and rare traits and anecdotes and moral instances and reminiscence and bade the folk copy them and to spread them over all lands and climes wherefore their report was brooded abroad and the people named them the marvels and wonders of the thousand nights in a night this is all that hath come down to us of the origin of this book and allah is all-knowing so glory be to him whom the shifts of time waste not away nor doth aught of chance or change affect his sway whom one case diverteth not from other case and who is soul in the attributes of perfect grace and prayer and peace be upon the lord's pontiff and chosen one among his creatures our lord mohammed the prince of mankind to whom we supplicate him for a goodly and a godly and now i end my tale of the thousand nights and one night till the next readings